Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Bridges and Tunnels meeting. Uh, I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, are there any uh, uh, public? Uh, <clears throat> are there any public speakers today? Good morning. We have three members of the public registered to speak today. As a reminder, we, all, we ask that all public speakers adhere to the MTA's rules of conduct and decorum. I would also like to remind our public speakers that in the interest of time and fairness to all speakers, we limit everyone to two minutes. Please be aware of the clock in the front of the room and the warning light you will see reminding you that you have 30 seconds left to conclude your remarks. The first speaker will be Murray Bowden. Following will be Charlton D'Souza, followed by Jason Anthony. Morning. Hey, Dave, it's going to be between you and me today because uh, you're going to have to follow up on this. I can't. Last month, I asked uh, about the uh, road lines. And Danny said, the traffic engineers say they're right, but they are wrong, in fact. So I did a little thinking, and I said, what's going on? What's going on is 90% of the traffic engineering community have been doing it wrong for 30 years. How do you get people who've been doing it wrong for 30 years to admit we screwed up? And that's what's going on. It's a safety issue because today, right turns green, people are texting, and you honk the horn, nobody's paying attention. So when the driver actually looks up, they need to see the yellow line on the left and the white line on the right. And the traffic computers in the cars and the buses, they have less computing power if it's standard. They don't have to use computing power to figure out where on earth I am because they know which direction it is. Now, how do you tell 90% of the traffic engineering community they're idiots and they've been using things that are illegal for the last 40 years? I can't make them change, but somebody up there, one of you on a board has to get rich you're a nice guy, but your team's lying to you straight out. There's no other way of saying they lie. It's a safety issue. Time to do something about it. Please conclude your remarks. Murray, stay healthy. That's it. The next speaker is Charlton D'Souza, followed by Jason Anthony. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Charlton D'Souza from uh, Passengers United. Uh, can everyone hear me? Okay, I'm assuming you can. So I want to talk about fair, uh, actually drivers who obey tolls. Um, this has been a big issue on the empty bridges and tunnels. And Channel 5, uh, Fox 5 News had a special report where they actually went to empty bridges and tunnels uh, facilities and they caught people dodging the tolls. And I think one of your officers was with them and showed how people are doing this. Millions and millions of dollars is being lost. I think it was somewhere like $30 uh, million or something. Maybe my figures are off. But what I don't understand is we're going off to fair beaters in the subway sometimes, right? But what about these people who are just putting stickers on their license plates and they're just going through the tolls without paying? I mean, is anybody concerned about this, especially with the MTs? Uh, financial situation, and then what 
this brought up all these concerns that was brought up by Fox 5 also talked about how congestion pricing would be implemented. So, you know, when congestion pricing happens, is this going to happen, you know, where people are going to dodge the tolls? How do you get that technology fixed? Um, so this is, you know, a situation. It's a very complex situation. And I hope that you guys can work this out. And as far as congestion pricing is concerned, Passengers United supports congestion pricing only on the Manhattan Bridge, Brooklyn Bridge, Queensboro Bridge, um, because those, you know, were formerly owned by DOT. But otherwise, to have it from 60th Street down doesn't make any sense. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. And uh, that comment, we should all take strongly, both the, uh, the toll evasion as well. We need uh, <clears throat> more <clears throat> bridges and tunnel offices so that they can stop the vehicles. Not only will we be doing a favor <clears throat> and receiving revenue, but we'll be doing the city favor for those that dodge all of the red light and school cameras. The next speaker is Jason Anthony. Good morning, David. Uh, good morning, uh, the rest of the Bridges and Tunnels uh, Committee. Jason Anthony here from the Amazon Gate Warehouse. Uh, this month we have breaking news from the Port Authority uh, Board. They uh, approved uh, this past week a uh, toll increase on their Bridges and Tunnels uh, facility. So we have to prepare to pay more if we are going to cross from New York City to New Jersey. So that's other another um fair uh, toll increase that we have to pay, and that uh, I raise concern that the poor story New Jersey Transit doesn't work with the MTA when it comes to uh congestion pricing. That both parties seems that they are not in the same page as us. So, David, we have to raise awareness that if we are going to go from New York to New Jersey starting January, we have to pay more. So that's all I have to say for this month. I'll see you guys in the clear rails. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That concludes the public comment. Thank you all. <clears throat> I need a motion to uh, for the minutes. Are, are there any questions on the minutes? Great. Okay. Uh, Bridge and Tunnel work plan next. Yes, Commissioner. Uh, there are no changes to the BNT committee work plan. Uh, uh, Rich, uh, will you uh, provide us? with uh, your, uh, the president's remarks. But be, before you do that, I, I, I want to tell you, uh, to my committee, uh, I, I travel the bridges and tunnels, and uh, I've been doing it, you know, since I'm uh, 17 years old. Uh, and Danny and Rich are so responsive when I call in to them, when I observe a problem with, whether it's traffic, construction, or whatever, I want to compliment you both. I'm sorry Danny's not here <clears throat> to hear that. Thank you, Commissioner. It truly is a team effort between all of our departments at, at, at BNT, our maintenance department, safety and health, internal security, our tolling operations, and then our partners in MTA Consolidated Headquarters uh, divisions. Good morning, and welcome to the November 2022 MTA Bridges and Tunnels Committee meeting. The 51st running of the TCS New York City Marathon kicked off on Sunday, November 6th, from its tr traditional start line at the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, 
While unseasonably warm temperatures may have challenged runners in their course, I'm pleased to report that our employees' collective efforts allowed for a safe and smoothly executed event that's to showcase our facility to a worldwide audience. This city permitted event was at full capacity for the first time since 2019 with more than 50,000 participants, along with a sea of event organizers and other officials on site at the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. Nevertheless, our experienced teams, which includes our bridge-based uh, construction and development business partners, knows this drill by heart as it takes place every year. Here are just a few photos from the day. Thank you. From my own experience working the event and directly handling planning for many years, preparation for this worldwide staging is a tremendous undertaking. With an event of such great magnitude, once the last athlete steps off of the bridge, planning for next year begins. TBTA coordinates closely with our city and state partners, as well as the event organizers for start preparations and of course the cleanup. So the final satisfaction comes when the on-site team reports that our bridge has been reopened to our customers. There are dozens of bridge and tunnel employees and others we can thank internally and externally for their work on this year's event. As we acknowledge the entire team for their efforts, we've asked for representatives from our maintenance department, operations department, and internal security to join us here this morning. As a sign of thanks to you and your teams, please stand when I call your name. Richard Cupo, Lieutenant, Field Operations South, Verrazano Narrows Bridge. Peter Granberg, Maintenance Superintendent, Field Ops South, Verrazano Narrows Bridge. Nicole Headley, Operations Superintendent, Field Ops South, Verrazano Narrows Bridge. Ramel Lee, Director of Field Operations South. Joseph Orlando, Maintenance Supervisor, Central Maintenance. Robert Scognamillo, Lieutenant, Special Operations Division. Anthony Sidney, Assistant Vice President, Internal Security Department. Jason Thomas, Inspector and Director of Special Operations. Rick Verdi, Director of Maintenance and Operations Support. If we may, let's have a quick round of applause for their joint efforts. Thank you all, and I was proud to be there with you on that day. Bridges and Tunnels moves customers every day, but two times of the year are especially notable, Mother's Day and, of course, Thanksgiving week. Last year, starting with the Tuesday of this holiday period through Sunday, we had more than 5.3 million vehicle crossings, slightly up from the same period in our highest traffic year of 2019 when we saw 5.2 million crossings. Last week's preliminary traffic totaled over 5.2 million trips again for the 2022 holiday week, falling just shy of last year, but on par with 2019. And in the spirit of the season, Bridges and Tunnels also held its winter prep meeting in late October. This is an annual exercise wherein all of our facets from maintenance and operations uh, we test our protocols and practices, review them, and update them as needed. Representatives from across bridge and tunnel departments attend, along with our construction and development business partners, so that everyone's informed and prepared to maintain our facilities and our back office through whatever Mother Nature has in store for us for the months ahead. And finally, I'd like to congratulate our newly minted bridge and tunnel maintainers who graduated from six weeks of intensive training on November 4th. It was our pleasure to spend time with these new employees, prior to their graduation ceremony, and I joined with Vice President of Maintenance Charles Passarella and the whole, entire, the whole BNT team in wishing them long and successful careers with us at TBTA. This now concludes my opening remarks, and if there are no questions, I'll continue on to my report on operations. Questions? Okay. The report on operations in this month's committee materials begins on page 14. As the school year made its full return in September, BNT saw the continued restoration of traffic at its vehicular crossings. Paid vehicle traffic for September of 2022 was 28.1 million vehicles, which reflects an increase of 4.4% 4. Uh, 4 over the 27.1 million crossings in September of 2021, or about 36,000 more vehicles per day. And it was 17.3% higher than September of 2020, with 4.1 million more crossings, or 133, uh, sorry, 138,000 additional vehicles per day. As compared to the pre-pandemic month of September of 2019, September of this year was 1.3% higher, with approximately 11,000 more vehicles per day crossing our bridges and tunnels. Easy Pass market share was 95.1% for September of this year, which was slightly above both last year and two years ago. 
for October of 2022, preliminary BNT traffic was 0.9% higher than October 21 and 16% higher than October of 2020. Per preliminary traffic data, traffic for October of 2022 was 0.8% higher when compared again with that pre-pandemic month of October of 2019. Gasoline prices decreased to an average of $3.83 per gallon in September, and weather conditions were not impactful to B&T's delivery of service. With Thanksgiving weekend now behind us, we use one of the busiest travel weeks of the year to plan for our transition into the 2022 holiday season. B&T personnel of all disciplines are intensely focused on working cooperatively to deliver the highest level of service, security, and safety to our motorists and to our communities. Throughout the season, B&T management teams will remain hypervigilant and engage with operations at each of our bridges and tunnels, monitoring conditions and trends so that our operational posture may be adjusted as needed. Lastly, and quite importantly, we ask that everyone drives with courtesy, care, and caution as we all strive for a happy and safe holiday season. If there are no questions, this concludes this month's report on operations. Thank you. And with that, I will turn it over to Eric Osnes, our Vice President and Chief Safety Officer, who will now present the safety report. Eric. Thanks, Rich. The September 2022 report begins on page 26, maintains performance metrics to be generally positive as traffic volume is now within pre-pandemic pre levels. BNT safety report highlights the following. BNT September 2022 total collision rate was 3.96 per million vehicles, lower than rolling year 1920, representing the beginning of the pandemic period. When compared to last year, results are also slightly lower. The collision with injury rate was 0.82 per million vehicles on par with rolling year 1920, which is slightly higher than last year, but less than one collision with injury per million crossings. Employee safety metrics over the 12 month period are as follows. Employee loss time rate was 5.3 incidents per 200,000 work hours, lower than both last year and rolling year 1920. And that includes, concludes the safety report. Thank you, Eric. If there are no questions, uh, there are also no procurements for BNT this month. And with that, this should conclude BNT's report. Uh, is there any uh, questions you have, uh, board members? Okay. Well, <clears throat> uh, I'd like to make a oh. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't um, see you. Yeah. Is there anywhere in this report where where I can follow the leakage every month on the toll collections? Um, I mean, every month somebody comes in here and complains about the licenses are obscured and you can't pick up everything. It's very important to us to establish a level of um, um, credibility with the public, especially with the beginning of um, congestion pricing. And um, is, we don't seem to be reporting on how many we're losing and how many uh, times we knock on the door of another state to pay us money that's owed and they don't do it. Um, why, does, why doesn't that appear in this report? That, uh, that, that data is tracked and we'll discuss internally ab ab about potential for reporting that. And, but uh, internally, I'm sure you do. I mean, I've invest looked at this before and I found yeah. you guys were doing a very diligent job and I thought I'd see a diminish diminishment. I mean, it was a couple of years ago, I think I argued about this stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I thought we'd see a diminish. When you described how you do it with, in coordination with the cops, I thought by now we would certainly see a diminution of the, I personally think the um, fine is so low that you'll never really be able to stop these people unless you raise the fine. But that's just a personal consideration. I want to, but over the last two years, I can't say that it, you know, as, a, as a, just an observer like everybody else, I I don't find less of these. I find more of these when I, every time I go out. I mean, you you see um, five six of these uh, place obscured plates every time you go to. Um, every time you eat across our facilities or driving around the streets and people do that for a reason and to me the reason is they're saving money and they defy defying the law enforcement agencies and the like but it would seem that all the considerations of broken windows would apply to those people as well if you really want to um, uh, search more people you know you, you pull these cars over that are obscuring their plates or, or vandalizing their plates um, which is another common thing, but I, you know, I feel this is a very important issue going into um, congestion pricing, and we need to follow it with uh, extreme diligence. Uh, Norman, 
Uh, thank you for bringing that up. Again, we don't have enough bridges and tunnel offices to enforce this. That's number one. And by enforcing this, we will have more safety as well because there's no substitute for a blue uniform. Uh, number two, you're right. <clears throat> there's no enforcement through the whole city. No police officer. Again, no New York police officer. I hope our men and women of the Metropolitan Transit Authority, <clears throat> they must get out and do their job and not be afraid of being brought up on charges that are uh, bogus. But again, <clears throat> uh, I mentioned to Rich that we need more bridge and tunnel offices and more MTA police offices. I can't speak for the city, but I can speak here. That's uh, my 30 years here or more. And uh, again, all you have to do is look on the street and look at someone's back license plate and you'll know. It's no different than the scooters having no license plate at all. And we have our bridge and tunnel officers, sergeants, lieutenants out there every day doing this job. So we do have squads out there. Uh, they do a great job. And, and as time goes on, they, we, we build even more momentum in, in doing this and enforcing, you know, working with our regional partners, the New York State Police, MTA Police, NYPD, the New York City Sheriff's Office, the DOTs of the city and state, as well as our partners in the Port Authority. So we are, we are out there doing this. Um, on, a on a daily basis, we are having you know a, a, a great success with what our officers are doing out there. As far as reporting it, that, that's what I was speaking about, inter you know, t talking about internally and how to get that into the report. Thanks, Lara. Yeah, but we do need more bridges and tunnels. We can't rely on New York State Police. They have their own duties, <clears throat> and we can't rely on New York City. We have to rely on ourselves. It's income that we will generate, in turn, we will also be uh, helping in New York City again, as I said, for the red light program and the school camera program. But we need more, and uh, we just got to bite the bullet. Uh, okay, uh, no other questions. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? Okay. Thanks, Norman.